Um, All right, we're going to talk about uh, chapter 20, induced voltages and inductance. Uh, they're showing you, this is a uh, uh, inside a hydroelectric power plant. It would be something like uh, like Hoover Dam. I don't know. I couldn't find where this particular uh, hydroelectric power plant is, but basically it comes from from a dam. The the uh, water rushing through uh, turns these turbines. The turbines uh, uh, either turn magnets in the presence of wire or turn wire in the presence of a magnet, and it generates electricity. Uh, you can look up Hoover Dam on Wikipedia, and you'll see similar. Uh, generators, uh, electric generators. Um, but let's start off. I'm going to start off just by reading the uh, the intro because they they say it a lot a lot better than I could. In 1819, Hans Christian Oersted discovered that an electric current exerted a force on a magnetic compass. His finding was the first evidence of a link between electricity and magnetism. Uh, his uh, because nature is often symmetric. The discovery that electric currents produce ma magnetic fields led scientists to suspect that magnetic fields could produce electric currents. Uh, experiments conducted by Michael Faraday in England and independently by Joseph Henry in the United States in 1831 showed that a charging magnetic field could induce an electric current in a circuit. Uh, the results of these experiments led to a basic and important law known as Faraday's law. Uh, in this topic, we discuss Faraday's law and several practical applications, one of which is the production of electric energy and power plants throughout the world. And thus, that's why they show you this photograph here. Uh, now let's go on to the, uh, uh, the rest of the discussion. Um, they have here, they, they have uh, a battery, uh, a wire coming off a battery around an iron core. Uh, primary, uh, an iron core uh, disc, uh, really kind of a torus, and then they have a secondary coil hooked up to a voltmeter. And there's no electrical connection between the primary coil and the se secondary coil, but when we close the switch on the, on the battery, it's the current flowing through the uh, wire is going to produce a magnetic field in the iron core and that magnetic field is going to be transmitted through uh, the iron core and that changing magnetic field um, on the secondary coil is going to is going to uh, induce a current into the secondary co coil and we'll get a voltage and we're actually going to do this as an experiment uh, it'll it'll be the experiment that uh, follows this particular um, follows this particular lecture. Uh, so, the uh, close the battery. You induce a magnetic field in the iron core. Uh, the the magnetic field travels through the iron core, and uh, you get a change in magnetic field in the secondary coil, and that produces a, a voltage. Okay, so uh, when magnetic flux travels through a coil, um, it produces a, uh, an, elect an electric current. So magnet let's discuss magnetic flux. Uh, we take a loop of uh, area A that's just a loop of wire, and you see these green lines of magnetic flux traveling through it. Um, there's a ob oblique view, and then there's a side view of what we're doing. Now, notice the, uh, the angle theta. So the magnetic flux, uh, uh, phi B is equal to B perpendicular. Notice the perpendicular, B perpendicular times area. Well, the B perpendicular is the cosine theta component of the B field. And the theta is defined as if you, if you have a coil, the theta is relative to the normal of the coil. And the normal is always the... Uh, uh, the normal is always the perpendicular to the surface of the coil. So uh, th this little marker here is showing you the normal to this uh, little coil of wire that I'm, I'm showing you. Uh, it's, uh, that's where we get our theta from. So it's the, the theta is the angle between the magnetic flux, the, the B field, and the normal to the coil. Um, so the, the magnetic flux is 
uh, the magnetic field times the area times cosine theta. And the units are, oops, I jumped the gun. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go back. Okay. The, um, uh, the units are uh, Tesla meter square or Weber's. Um, okay. So here's magnetic flux. Now you can barely see it, but there's two different coils here. Uh, one is perpendicular to the, uh, uh, or the, the, the coil itself is perpendicular to the magnetic field and the other one is in line. Well, if, you, the, if the normal is defined as the, uh, the, the vector coming off of the surface of the, the, uh, the coil, you see that the angle here is zero, theta equals zero. And so you get maximum uh, flux. Now, if it's, if it's parallel to the uh, magnetic field, you can see that, well, there are no flux lines go through it. The, the, uh, so theta in this case, the normal to the coil is coming out this way. So the theta is 90 and the, so phi is, phi B is equal to zero. Uh, okay, and that uh, serves as the intro to this topic. We'll continue with Faraday's law of induction and Lenz's law uh, in, the next, uh, in the next video. Yeah, that's the, the point I'm supposed to stop.